With the news coming out that the Chicago Bulls had an interview with Brandon Miller, to pair that with the fact that the Portland Trailblazers and the Dallas Mavericks are shopping their first-round picks, the natural question is, can the Bulls get involved in those talks? We're going to talk about that, plus dive into the mailbag right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes. If you guys want to follow me, you can do so at CEO Hayes, that's C-E-O-H-A-I-Z-E. If you want to follow the show, you can do so at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform that we're on that I want you to find us on. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the content for today. So the Portland Trailblazers are shopping pick number three, and the Dallas Mavericks are shopping pick number 10. And this is naturally brought about from Bulls communities, Bulls pundits, Bulls whatever you want to call it. Can the Chicago Bulls get involved in these talks and potentially walk away with one of these picks? And here's the thing, right? You know, I always try to be a realistic Bulls fan in the way that I cover the team. I really don't like to have the whole, uh, you know, the the, the big kind of eye-catching titles of like, the Bulls are going to trade for the number three overall pick, which I'm sure has been inundated on your timeline since this news has come out. But I want to talk about it realistically, and then I want to talk about it hopefully, right? It, the hope that I have for this team, which is very different from how I see this team realistically going sometimes. And I think it helps my it helps me from being disappointed when I look at it that way, right? The duality of it all. But could the Bulls potentially get involved in these talks? Let's first talk about the Portland Trailblazers, number three overall pick. Portland, a team that is motivated by their star, Dame Lillard, to try to stay competitive. He's come out flat out and said, no more 19-year-olds on this team. He basically doesn't want any more teenagers. And when you look at the fact, if how even, even like Dame doing the whole retweet thing with Joel Embiid and stuff like that, Dame wants to compete. And Dame doesn't want to go through another rebuild, even though he's primarily been in a team that's been in a current, a permanent state of rebuilding. Hey, hello, we're, we're there with you as well there, Dame. Oh, uh, with that being said, though, he wants to compete. And it's already come out that the Portland Trailblazers are interested in moving that pick because they do want to re-sign Jeremy Grant, and they kind of want to roll things back that they have, but add add veterans to that team in big pieces so that that Dame can compete. Now, naturally, this has gone into a couple of different scenarios for the Chicago Bulls. Could they offer Zach Levine in that move to pair Zach and Dame down in Portland? The Bulls get the number three overall pick. They hopefully draft a player like Scoot. Henderson or Brandon Miller, and boom, they are jumping into a rebuild, right? Now, realistically, let's talk about other things that have come out is that the Bulls are planning on reshaping the roster around Zach Levine. Now, does that mean that they cannot pivot off of it? No, it does not. Let's look at the the, the, uh, DeMar DeRozan of it all. You pair DeMar with Dame, that could open up the Portland Trailblazers to get a one-year look at at, at, uh, DeMar and Dame together, and then they don't necessarily have any long-term money attached to them He's off the books the following season if it doesn't work out, right? Kind of less, I don't know how realistic that is. The other player, and number big three, Nikola Vucevic, right? Could we sign and trade Nikola Vucevic to the Portland Trailblazers, uh, a, a team that their starting center has not been able to stay healthy, and it could be interested in a player like Vooch, who really has shown he can, he can fit in in a uh, third player role, and does Portland feel like they have enough defense, or are they just going to double down on offense at that point? Chauncey Billet being the head coach down there, there's scenarios, right? Now, I'm not going to work through the minutia of every single deal and how it gets players where and all of that, but those would be, one of those pieces would probably be involved if you're looking at the Chicago Bulls getting that number three overall pick to the Portland Trailblazers. I don't want to say it's impossible, and I'm not saying that it necessarily is a complete foregone conclusion that those trade talks can't happen. I just see them as kind of unrealistic, right? There's a couple of reasons why the Bulls would make a perfect trade partner just on the surface level for the Portland Trail Blazers. When you look at the Blazers wanting to remove those protections, also having the Knicks number 23 pick, I just don't know if the Bulls and Blazers talk trade if it's going to be about that number three overall pick. I don't know if the Bulls have assets enough to get it done, but here's what I'll say with that. If the Bulls do get involved in the NA trade talk like that, and they get a player, let's say it's a Scoot or a Brandon Miller, whoever it ends up being, they better be damn sure because they're not just going to get the number three overall pick for DeMar, Vooch, or Zach and keep it moving. They're going to have to attach some future picks to that themselves. And so at least I would expect them to. So if you look at that, the Bulls can attach a thing out to their 2029 pick, 
Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that one. And if they do that, they better make damn sure that whatever player they get with that draft pick makes the Bulls a playoff team because unlike what we did with the Voot trade, you don't want to give lottery protected or top 10 or whatever protected picks, and then your team ends up not working out, and then they, the team benefits from a lottery pick on top of that. So I, I, I'm not to say when you look at the Portland Trailblazers and what their motivations could be and everything that they could want in this trade, right? They're going to want a future pick. Get to whenever Dame, if this Dame situation doesn't work, they can recoup some benefits, maybe have multiple picks. Once that's all done, they're going to probably want a shorter term salary again, because if they need to pivot off Dame, if they give it two, three seasons and it doesn't work, you don't want to be paying somebody four or five seasons or something like that. If you can get out that Dame, they're probably going to want it to kind of align with Dame's contract, who I know signed a big a contract. I think he has four years left on it. So they may want some some alignment there to where they can get out of it if necessary. So I'm not saying that it's impossible, right? I'm saying that looking at the bones of it, I think it it it's less probable than it than than more probable if that makes sense. It really comes down to do the Portland Trailblazers see Zach, Demar, or Vooch as the piece that they want to pair to Dame? Uh, w- combine that with Jeremy Grant. And if they're going to ride that out and then hope that's going to be enough to have them competing in a tough Western Conference. And that's the question that the Portland Trailblazers would have to ask themselves. I know it's easy as a fan of a specific team. In this case, I'm a Bulls fan to think of a deal that is that works financially. But does it work for the motivations of the other team in this case? And that's the Portland Trailblazers. And that's the biggest question there. If they see DeMar, Vooch or Zach as that piece, there's a world in which that deal gets done. and so. You know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I um like I said, I, maybe it's me trying to temper my expectations and your expectations. Like I said before, I'm not a hyperbolic um content creator. I'm not going to really try to hit you guys over the head with the well, this minutia of this and this could potentially work. Not going to do that. I'm just going to try to be realistic in it. And it looks like Dame has a uh player option all the way up to the 2024-25 season. So really, realistically, they don't even have that. So that would make Kind of more sense, I guess, in my in my case, he well, he can extend it out into 2026, 27. That's what I thought. Okay. So that's the contract extension there. Um, so it really depends on if they see those players as worth the number three overall pick. Now, that, and that's the biggest question. This is a team that even with Jeremy Grant, and Jeremy Grant pretty, playing pretty good for them last season, that they couldn't get into the playoffs. Now, there are some tanking on that on the, on the end of that season to where they kind of just let things happen. That's the question that the Trailblazers will be asking. Or could they use that number three overall pick to pry a disgruntled superstar? Could they go after a, a, a Jalen Brown, who maybe the Boston Celtics, if they don't come out the East, may be looking to avoid paying two Supermax contracts to him and Jason Tatum? A lot of speculation around that. Not necessarily saying that that's a, a for sure thing that, could, that will happen, but that's kind of what you have to ask yourself, right? But I do think that it's a possible deal. It just, it just depends on how high they value what we have to offer. Then the Dallas Mavericks, right? And you look at the Dallas Mavericks situation. They have the number 10 overall pick. They wanted that pick to add flexibility. I know that they tanked that last game, but it wasn't necessarily so that they could draft a player and keep it. It could be that they see that as maybe the next opportunity to add a star to Luka, maybe even keep Kyrie, which seems like there's some conversation that that may happen. Um, And so with that number 10 overall pick, what would be their motivations? We've already heard, and I've speculated, Vooch would be a nice trade asset for them. But I do want to temper this, right? Keep in mind, they moves during moves done during the the M- NBA draft. I don't think that I've ever seen a sign and trade completed during the NBA draft. So I'm not sure now. Now the NBA has moved up to where you can extend your own players, which technically a sign and trade is you re, is you re-signing a player then immediately training, uh, trading them. I'm not sure how that new rule factors into that. But if it's based around a Voot sign and trade, it may not be, we may not be able to get the 10th overall pick at the draft. It may be something that they have to work out later, right? So that's something to look at as well. Um, it'd be different if Voot was on the contract, but I do think that Voot could be a target for them to pair next to Luka again. Another player that, uh, again with Vooch, already showed he's, he can figure out a way to be the third on a team. And I think that if they do re-sign Kyrie and they're just trying to look to add as much talent around Luka as possible to just convince him to stay in and not be as disgruntled, that could be a door that's open for the Chicago Bulls as well. 
Let's go back to the to the Dame. I'm sorry, the uh the Demar part of it. Could they be interested in a one year rental for Demar DeRozan to pair a secondary score next to Luca? But again, can Luca fit with that? Right. That's that's some of the questions there. Zach Levine, the the next trade target up in that one. Could they look at pairing Zach Levine and Luka Doncic as a pairing that they say, hey, we feel like this is something that we can run back, especially in that case, maybe they lose uh, Kyrie and don't worry about re-signing them. So there is permutations and ways that the Bulls could potentially get involved for these two picks that we know are being shopped. There's even some rumor of Charlotte shopping their pick. But I don't necessarily know that it's as probable because I, as you guys saw with the video yesterday, I'm not quite as faithful uh, I have as much faith in this front office's ability to come up off their own players that they brought here. That's just something that I kind of doubt with this team. Listen, but we'll see. Maybe the Bulls do get lucky. Maybe we're talking about a draft day trade in which the Chicago Bulls have traded into this draft, and then that would be an indication of the direction for this team, finally, from AK and Eversley. Like, are they ready to come up off this roster? So being on the lookout for that, I just wanted to talk about that because I know over the last 24 hours that has been a heavy conversation amongst Bulls communities um and we'll see we'll see going into the next one I want to talk about two players specifically that I think may be on their way out in Chicago and these are both players that I like right and I think I think the writing is on the wall that Javante Green's gone um I think when you look at the the way that the Bulls need to add size and shooting it, if it would have been either him or, or DJJ if DJJ would have opted out I think maybe the Bulls would have maybe looked to keep Javante and not re-sign Derrick Jones Jr. But with Derrick Jones Jr. opting in and Javante kind of falling out of that rotation, even when he was healthy towards the end of the season, I think that it's an indication. We all love Javante. And I think Javante is a Chicago Bulls player. When we look at the energy, the effort, all that, Javante brings it all night in and night out. But to add something to this team, you have to use, you have to create space by taking something away. And I think that the energy and everything that Javante greens, I think, that they may look at Derrick Jones Jr. bringing enough of that with if and if you add use him leaving to add a shooter at that point you're benefiting your team. So I think that Javante, I think the writing's on the wall that Javante is on his way out of Chicago. I've basically been saying that almost since about the mid part of the season, just kind of when I started realizing how things were going to go, especially with his injury and things like that. Javante's going into his first time as an unrestricted free agent at 29 years old, and he deserves to get paid. I just don't think that he would get the most money even here in Chicago if he did choose to say. So I think Javante may be on his way out. Now, next up with this, and I know some Bulls fans go back and forth on this. I'm starting to think that I, if the Bulls can get a starting caliber point guard via trade, sign and trade, just signing a player outright, you know, uh, giving a, a player an offer sheet and that team not matching them, I uh, Trey Jones maybe with, Sa- with San Antonio. I think Tyrus, Tyus Jones is locked in now because with John Morant's suspension coming, I don't see them getting rid of Tyus. But maybe a Trey Jones or something like that. Um, I think that if they can do that, Io's on his way out. And I think that you look at increasing the role of Kobe White. Kobe White showed his defense was right there with Io. Much better offensive upside um, around the same age, so you're not really benefiting much there. But I think with the current situation that the Bulls are in, had had the Bulls been a, been able to use the disabled player exception, which they can use, but we know that they're not likely to with this front with this ownership group, because uh, that would send them into the luxury tax. But I do think that Io Desumu may be on his way out, but I don't think they're just going to let him walk away for nothing, considering he's a restricted free agent, motivated to maybe complete a sign and trade in a case like that to facilitate that type of deal. But I think I think Io may be a casualty, and Io honestly may be part of the uh, a casualty to get into this draft if the Bulls do trade into this draft as well. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. I, that's, that's just kind of where my mind's going right now. I'm still trying to get a filler around the Vooch situation. I'm still more leaning towards Vooch returning to this team next season. I think it's going to be Vooch and Kobe re-signed, and I think we're going to operate with that mid-level exception to try to go out there and get some things, maybe do some trades, some, some minor trades with some things that we have around there as well. But that's kind of my thought process on it. You guys can let me know what you think on everything down below. Uh, not to necessarily say that you agree with me, but I think as we go forward in this free agency and just looking at what we need to add to this team, I'm starting to think that those two players may be the ones that are that are on their way shipping out. And then we maximize the roles of a Dalen Terry. We try to sign uh, a shooter maybe at, at, for part of that mid-level, and then we try to go out and get a starting caliber point guard as well. Now, this can change. It's fluid. If they end up moving Kobe White to the starting point guard, which some do expect. I think that may increase the chance of Io DeSumo staying and playing that bench, that first bench uh, 
guard role, that combo guard role. So, you know, we'll take a look out on that one. But let's go ahead and get into this voicemail. This one's from Brandon L. Jet. Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, hey? This is Brandon L. Jet, the general. Uh, I'm calling for another voicemail for you. This one, um, it's in regards to everything. Pretty much the boots trade, with Wendell Carter Jr., last night's like draft lottery, and then some other things. Now, I know exactly how uh, the Minnesota Wolves were as soon as we did that uh, Jimmy Butler trade for Laurie Marketing, Zach Levine, and uh, Chris Dunn. Um, looking at this Vooch trade with Wendell Carter Jr. and all of their draft picks that they got from us, um, the short term, you could be stoked about it because he, you cannot deny like Vooch's productivity, the way that he uh, uh, um, scores as well the way that he scores, the way that he passes, and he is durable as hell. Like, he he was only one or two players up on the Bulls roster that played in all 82 games this season, the other being P. Will. He has been durable for his entire time up in the Bulls uniform, minus that stand when he did COVID, but then to just sit back and just watch how Orlando loaded up as far as um, they had a young – Lindell Carter Jr., which I know at the at that time, at the end of his time with the Bulls, he was in and out of the lineup with injuries, of course, but then he had re-signed with a great contract, um, four years and $50 million, which actually decreases over time, which gives them the flexibility to re-sign players like Pablo, Franz Wagner, and whoever else they draft, draft, it just really sets them up for success in the long term. So in the short term, I think the Bulls that won that trade with um, like Vooch, Vooch's role. But long term, I think the Magic is pretty much loaded up as far as the future. We're keeping Wendell Carter. We're drafting Franz Wagner. And I don't even know who they're going to get this season, uh, uh, depending on – who they draft, and what their productivity is. So that's my thoughts. What are yours? Peace. All right. So the general, shout out to the general for coming through. Um, but on that, uh, as far as y- your evaluation basically of the 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 where the Magic are versus where the Bulls are and how, they, how that trade went, I completely agree with you, right? The Magic basically did the same thing with Wendell that they did with Vooch. They signed him on a declining uh, deal. That's exactly what Vooch did. And I thought at the time that the Bulls made a smart mo- move there because as Vooch's salary decreased, it gave you more flexibility to add to your roster. But no, this is Chicago Bulls team owned by Jerry Reinsdorf. It just gave the Bulls an opportunity to be cheap. That's what it gave them. But I, I think I like what I like what Orlando's building down there. I've said that before. I like a lot of the pieces of the roster. I don't think Wendell has improved in the way that some Bulls fans like to paint that he's improved. But overall, like I said before, we we didn't win the Vooch trade. We didn't win the Vooch trade. It just it, it just is what it is. And especially when you look at the fact that those both those picks. That could have not been lottery picks had some different things gone for the, the Bulls' way. They both turned into lottery picks. You get Franz Wagner, you get Wendell, you get whoever they're going to draft now in a deep draft on top of that. If that player develops into something, they absolutely won that trade. They got three young players that are going to be building blocks for their future or chips that they use to improve their team overall, and that's just where it is. I mean, that's, that's just what it shakes down to, unfortunately. The Bulls lost that trade, and AK's desire to – get the Bulls back into just being relevant so quick, came back to bite us in our ass. And let's hope that there's not that many more deals like that left in AK's term. Let's hope. Let's hope not. Don't know how 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 much faith I have in that, but let's hope not. But that's it. That's my time for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, even if it is seeing red and being pissed off at this team. I love you guys, man. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks Media. Media.